record. No, you don't. It's recording. <gasps> Get loud in the podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm MK, and this is RK, and welcome to the MK RK podcast. It's a little different today, as you can tell, because I'm not home and MK is. So we're going to be doing it like this for right now. We have, I'll be home in like a few weeks. So then we can start filming normal podcasts and then we'll have like normal podcasts all summer. Sound good? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So today we have a really deep podcast. We're going to be asking each other some like real deep thought existential type questions and we're going to try and answer them to the best of our ability however we think it should be. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So MK do you want to go first? Sure I'm just doing these in the order I wrote them. (laughs) <laughs> so like I'm just gonna read them off because I remember a couple of these I wrote it like way too early in the morning that means so they're good kind of, probably kind of loopy you understand why mm-hmm. okay. uh, my first question do you think if you lost all of your memories you would still turn out to be the same person you are Okay, so let me clarify. If I lost all of my memories Mm -hmm. and, like, had to relive life over again, but no, none of the same experiences? Yeah, you you basically are living, so, like, uh, like, right now, you just lost all of your memory and you just had to keep on going. Do you think you would turn to be, like, the same kind of person, or do you think, like, you're, um you would change like how you act and like view the world and things like that hmm I think personally I would be relatively the same however I do think that there are people who would be very different Mm -hmm. because I think who I am around has shaped me more than my memories and my experiences have, but I feel like there are a lot of people who are really shaped by their experiences. So that's my answer. What's your okay. answer? Um, I think that I would be more relatively the same than a, like that I am. I do think, however, that I wouldn't be as outgoing as I am because Rachel, I don't know if you remember, but I used to be extremely shy. <laughs> I remember how shy you were. Yeah, so I feel like, but like, I've been like getting out of my bubble like a lot, but I feel like if I was, if I was to start life over again, I would probably become like extremely shy again Mm -hmm. instead of being like how outgoing I am right now. What made you outgoing? Um, definitely the cosplaying. That was one thing, but I think it was just because like, um, why well, would since I've been like at work and since like all y'all like my friend wise have gone off to school I feel like now I have to be more outgoing and yeah. being able to be like out there not to mention when I was in middle school I used to have to I, I had to pick up for my friends because they were even more shy than I was Oh. they wouldn't even like order their food from a like like if we went to McDonald's I would have to order for them because they were just too shy to do it that's crazy yeah so I do think because I had those kinds of friends and because of like becoming famous because of cosplay I do think it's made me more outgoing than I would like than I would be Sure. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything over. I like that answer. That's a good, well thought out quality answer. Thank you. It's almost like I wrote the question or something. <laughs> okay. Well, whatever. Don't be like. <laughs> <laughs> so, this one really intrigues me. Mm-hmm. If there existed a perfect clone of you, would it also be you? Would it act in exactly the same manner, like a mirror? Or would it act differently? And if it acted differently, then would it still be a clone? 
or would it still be you? At what point would it not be you? Well, I mean, it isn't you, it's just a clone. And again, going back to like the last question, I do think experiences help shape you like at least a little bit. Mm -hmm. So like they don't have all of your memories and everything that you yourself are. But then would it be a clone? Because a clone yeah, is it would the still exact be a clone. It's not, copy of you. It's like, it's it's not an exact copy. Clones aren't supposed to be exact copies. They're just supposed to like be exactly look alike of you. Not like internal memory and all of that kind of dealio. I always figured that's what a clone would be. Like, it's it like your memories you. and you as a whole. Yeah. Like every itty bitty little piece of you is in that clone. No, I think to me, a clone is a, like, they look exactly like me and they have the same genetic material as me, like exact, but they don't have my experiences and they aren't me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There we so go. I guess clones to me are more like twins instead of being you exactly. <laughs> Yeah, like kind of how eyebrows are sisters, not twins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, by the way, I shaved off the ends of my eyebrows and nobody has noticed. I noticed. <laughs> like, I, I remember, I've been telling it, like, yeah, I put, I, like, took off my ends and people are like, what? And then they're like, oh, yeah, I guess you have. I noticed, I think, like, just before you had said something. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I think they look nice because they're not everywhere like they were with my tails. Yeah, I don't think it looks weird. No, it looks pretty normal on my face. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's your turn. <laughs> Do eyebrows make a purse? No, I'm just kidding. Yes. Okay. Um, now, this is now. This kind of pertains to like the first question. I was like, how about reversed? So like, what if uh, you were the same, like you have all of your memories and everything, but what if everyone around you forgot about you? Like they had no idea who you were. What, what would you do? Um, well, I feel like I would attempt to meet all of the same people. Mm -hmm. there are probably some people I'd leave out <laughs> <laughs> but since I have all of my memories and stuff like I know all about those people like everything they like what they do mm -hmm. and so like I think it would be pretty easy to become friends with them again I feel like your family would be more difficult just like walking in and being like hey yeah hey I live here <laughs> Like, try and, like, be family again would yeah, be a that lot harder be... than becoming friends with somebody. I I feel like my mom would, <laughs> I feel like my mom wouldn't be, like, too, too, like, no, you can't come in here. I mm -hmm. feel like she'd be like, oh, yeah, come on in, because she's just that kind of a person. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, in my house, constantly there have been people to move in and out, whether they're, like, family, friends, or just people we know uh-huh um but yeah I I feel like at the beginning I would be like very like oh my gosh what the heck is happening and like try and show them like photos or be like this is like my room why do you think it's decorated like this look all but we these do have photos me. like we have yeah if, I imagine okay. in, like I help. imagine in the situation like everyone just forgot about you but you still have like your photos and all like the memories you have and like everything would still be the same otherwise well know? then in that case my vlogs would be very helpful there you go that's true <laughs> i'll just show everyone your vlogs like, you just be like <laughs> you're like hey just in case you forget about me now yeah, that's yeah. my reason for vlogging just instead of just because i enjoy it it's gonna be like oh just in case everybody gets amnesia and forgets about me <laughs> i need to start doing that on my own channel because like oh god Yes. Yes, you do. You need to vlog. Yeah, it's it's just like, something. this is Rachel. She knows me. Do you, Rachel? <laughs> Although we have like the most videos together. So I guess like it, through the MKRK podcast, you know what I mean? And stuff. 
I'd be like, yeah, there's yeah, no so, like, way. I guess I could just show you our channel and then be like, I guess we do know each other. Hmm. Yeah. It'd be kind of hard to fake that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That'd be a very, very elaborate ruse. That would also be hilarious, though. <laughs> I mean, not really, because I don't want to forget about you, but still. Okay. What would you genetically alter about the human race to improve them as a species? Mm. Do you have an answer or do you not? I have a couple ideas. Mm -hmm. Like, I think having hands for feet would be very helpful. <laughs> um maybe That's having so bills would be helpful yeah yeah oh the uh we um being amphibious yeah so like if you had gills they wouldn't like dry out or anything you know yeah um maybe Ooh, having the ability to become see-through like your skin just so that like we don't need things like MRIs, CAT scans, exploratory surgeries, x-rays. You can just, like... Yeah, you could just become see-through for, like, doctors. I feel like that would be that relatively would... important and a good idea. I'd give us an extra toe. Not for any reason, just because. Some people have an extra toe. My grandma's missing one of her toes. Well, one toe on each foot. Mm. Let me think. I don't know, because, like, um, what I do wish is that we had um, organs that could repair themselves relatively easily. Like, um, oh, goodness. I think a liver well, like, can grow itself. You did have, really like, a an illness where it was like causing your body to like deteriorate like uh if you had cancer or anything then your body would be able to just like heal over it instead of needing to go to a doctor to get it all fixed and needing mm -hmm. to pay like those high prices yeah you know I, mean? I mean like i also think that if we were see-through um that would eliminate um smoking a significant amount like yeah. if you could actually see your lungs or your heart becoming coated in tar I feel like a lot of people would stop smoking versus just being told that that happens yeah because like you can see it on somebody else too because like they have like oh this is what a normal pair of lungs looks like this is what a smoker's lungs look like but like uh if you could see literally see what was happening to your own body I feel like there would be a lot of people that would stop Mm -hmm. but then that also begs the question would people do it just to see what would happen to their own body you know what I mean yeah I feel like I would do things like eating and drinking to like just see what it looks like <laughs> but I still don't think I would so I can see the juice go down yeah you know when you're like really really thirsty and you chug water and you can literally feel it like hydrating your organs that's yeah that's kind of what I'm thinking every night at 3 a.m yes <laughs> okay your turn all righty um I'm, I'm gonna get this question out of here because I think it's funny and it's it's not something that uh, needs to be answered but I want it to be okay who the heck made the Easter Bunny like obviously we have Saint Nick he's based off of a real person but who decided the Easter Bunny was going to be the person like the this the head of Easter like who decided this giant rabbit who poops jelly beans and lays eggs is going to be the mascot for Easter and will come into kids' houses to give them candy. I'm wondering like, if like, this was is it just Google a, it, like, Was it a parent who was just really bored and he was like, oh yeah, there's an Easter bunny that comes once a year on Easter. 
I'm how did that become a huge thing? Googleable because yeah, that is really stupid. Isn't um, it? Like it just it, I feel like it just kind of became a thing. Like obviously somebody had to start it. So like Okay, so this is what Google says. Uh-huh. It says according to some sources, the Easter bunny, so this was only some sources. Uh-huh. The Easter Bunny first arrived in America in the 1700s with German immigrants who settled in Pennsylvania and transported their tradition of an egg-laying hare called Osterhaus. Their children made nests which this creature could lay its colored eggs. <laughs> yeah, but why did the Germans have it? Exactly. Who decided this gigantic rabbit was going to happen were they just like christ loved rabbits easter we'll put it for easter we already have christ saint nick everybody for, we already have saint nick for for christmas we're gonna have this gigantic rabbit for easter oh it says um the easter hare originally played the role of a judge evaluating whether children were good or disobedient in behavior at the start of this season of easter tide Oh, so it used to be a good or a bad thing. I feel like now it's just, yeah, the Easter Bunny comes. No, he would, like, judge if kids were good or bad. It was, like, yeah. Santa Claus. But Santa Claus is a person. Exactly. And bunnies so don't like, lay who, eggs. So where did you just when, come up with, oh, yeah, an egg-laying bunny is going to be what we do for this holiday? Exactly. Because, like, it, like, was there just, again, a parent who was just like, all right, you're being a bad kid. You don't want the Easter Bunny to come and get you, do you? No, yeah, like, seriously, that's exactly what they're saying. It's like. Was there just like a parent who just didn't know how to deal with their kid and they're like, we got you for the Easter Bunny. It's a giant, giant rabbit that lays eggs. And they were like, oh God. But it, it also didn't say anything about the eggs having like candy inside or something. Oh no, that's the other thing. Did it just start out like, okay. Like, I, it was just yeah. an egg, and they would eat the eggs. Like, oh, yes, this chicken. Also, they used to dye them red to, uh, like, only red. I read about it because it represents the blood that Jesus shed. Yeah, but what does Jesus have to do with bunnies? Anyway, what? Screw well, it. it's Easter. Well, yeah, but, but it's what? also, like, why an egg? I think if anybody knows in the comments, leave it down below. I think you've unlocked some stuff that I'm not ready to have unlocked. So I'm going to put that back in a compartment in my brain and we're going to leave it there. Okay. <laughs> okay. That sounds good to me. All right. <laughs> if you were braver, what would you be doing with your life? Um, I have actually been thinking about this, but I would love to just drop everything and travel. Yeah, that's probably my answer, too. Like, I don't care where I'm going. I, like, I will literally just walk, like, across America. Because, mm -hmm. like, I feel like it would be an interesting experience, and not many people would be able to say they have done the same thing. But just what walking would you do across for money America. To, like, afford this experience. Yeah. That's, yeah, affording is the problem, too, because everything's too high-priced. Yeah. Unless you find some really nice people along the way. But you might I mean, also I guess meet it's some possible, really bad then, people. Like, they could be murderers. How do you know? Exactly. So you never know. But that, I guess, is where the braver part comes in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I would probably still say travel, too. But I'd probably be thinking, like, other countries and stuff. Yeah, you would try. <laughs> well, like, I would just like to, I would, it would be an experience, because, like, I don't drive. I've always thought of just like starting to walk and just not stopping, just seeing where I go. Yeah. And where I end up. That's true. That's a cool idea. I mean, yeah. I would Maybe probably one day in a lot more. Me, places. 80 years old, traveled across America. <laughs> yeah. My videos would definitely be more interesting, that's for sure. I'd yeah, be like walking <laughs> Walmart overnight. Dude, I have a video idea in my folder that's never going to happen. But it's it it just says twenty four hour walking live stream. <laughs> I was like, that's an idea, but I don't think I would ever do that. Why not? I'd watch it. That'd be really cool. 
it would be interesting but it's also like uh i would i would try and see like how far i can get in 12 hours and then on the then travel back 12 hours i mean yeah you'd have to travel back but that would still be really cool unless yeah. you, had, you were just walked in one line for 24 hours and then you had somebody come and pick you up that's true but it's also mm, i probably couldn't get too too far in 24 hours not walking no no not walking like if i was driving that'd be a different thing but if i was like walking continuously for 24 hours just to see where i would end up i'd watch that I anyway <laughs> yeah go ahead it's your turn all right did you uh, you also said that you would travel if you were braver yeah or break in more places okay you, you ready for this one yeah maybe do animals have a life purpose like do they think that they have their own life purpose like you know how like people are like in my lifetime i want to do this this and this do animals also have like that same like kind of thing going on i think that animals have a life purpose but as far as if they think they do I think some do and some don't. Like, I genuinely think yeah. that dogs think it's their life purpose to make us happy and to love us and get loved by us. And cats are, like, the exact opposite because they suck. Um, but then, like... <laughs> the humans must bathe me in love. Yeah. But, That's like... That. Sorry for all my vegans out there, or vegetarians, if you disagree. But, like, for a cow, for example, I think their life purpose is to feed off the land, feed us, provide us with sustenance and things like that, provide us with milk, things like that. Um, but I don't think that they necessarily think that that's their life's purpose. Mm -hmm. But along those lines, I feel like there are a lot of people who believe they have found their life's purpose or think they know what it is and it may not be as well. I think we're all just animals that have a life purpose, mm -hmm. but it may be different than our actual life purpose. I like that answer. I, I was thinking about this with elephants specifically, because I was reading about how like they are super smart to a point where scientists have found that they like they have funerals for their own dead where like elephants will travel long distances just to be like at a funeral and like comfort the other elephants there mm -hmm. or like they do rituals according to the moon so like when it's a waxing moon they will hold up sticks and do dances to the moon That's and so when it's a full moon they will go and bathe so i was like i wonder if elephants like are along the lines of they know what they are in their herd and that is their life purpose and that they think and know about that yeah that's actually that's interesting because like say you're a wolf and the leader of a pack you know that you're like so you are the alpha is yeah. to be the alpha of that pack that's interesting i actually yeah. like that thought i'm gonna ask a few people that question today Hey. Okay. But yeah, I think I think they do know where they stand in their herd. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do think some animals do know like what their purpose is. But then like along the lines of like maybe a worm where they're just chugging along, doing their yeah. own thing. They probably don't have like their own life purpose per se. Yeah. Or they think not worms in particular or the animal thinks they know what their life purpose is, and it may not be what it was actually meant to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, this one's more of a did you realize question. Uh -huh. It's kind of uncomfortable to think about, but it says, do you ever realize there was a moment when your mom or dad put you down as a baby and never picked you up again? <laughs> I've heard this one before and I'm like, I told my mom this, and she was like, what, do you want me to pick you up or something? <laughs> no, Kathleen. I was like, no, I just you. wanted you to think about it. <laughs> and then, I, and then uh, there was another question that went along with that, but uh, somebody, somebody else, I remember somebody on TikTok asked that question, 
And then somebody in the comments was like, have you ever seen your parents jump before? And I was like, no. I've seen my dad jump. I don't think I've seen my mom jump more than like a little hop. I, I've i never seen my mom jump or hop before. Um, I think my dad, the closest he's done is like jumping from place to place. Like, because we go hiking, so crossing, like, a ditch or something, you know? Yeah, but that's more of a leap. That's not, like, a jump. True. Okay, but my actual question is... Go ahead. Why are you worth knowing? I'm not. That's the thing. Yes, you are. I'm just a human that's trying to live their life on this world. I would say you're worth knowing. I thank you. But that's the thing. If somebody wants to get to know me, then sure, go at it. But it's not like there's anything like, like, obviously I'm me and I have only unique characteristics that make me me. Um, But it's just like, I'm another human being on this earth. Like, I'm fine with just being that. Well, yeah, Um, but I'm saying like, there's somebody who already wants to be your friend. Okay. Yeah. And they're Mm -hmm. asking you, well, what is worth it for me to get to know you? Like, I already want to be your friend, but why should I be your friend? Um, because I'm just that good. But no, I think just my creativity and being able to like solve problems. Like I was literally just uh, texting like a few people. Um, One of my coworkers is asking about like how to do something like um how to switch over her payroll kind uh-huh. of deal and I was just helping her um think of ways that we could be doing that or like my friend um TJ was just asking me about like what we should be t- doing and like because like he's gonna hang out with me tomorrow uh-huh. and I was like well why don't we just like go on an adventure because there's like woods but like to and from So why not just go on like an adventure and see where that takes us? But like just being uh, creative and I will stand up for people and um, I will help in any way that I can, hopefully. I think- I think those are good answers. Yeah. I think those are the reasons why people, why I think people like being my friend. I like being your friend for a lot of reasons. But I- because I've known you too right now. Just be like, awkward I've... to end it at this point. Huh? Mostly because I know you too long, and it's just it would be awkward to end it at this point. Yeah, really, it would be like such a time waste if like it was all for nothing. Yeah, so... really, twenty years down the drain. Yeah, so just like, stupid. why end it? But no, <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel like it's worth knowing you because you're really friendly and welcoming so like no one's ever gonna feel awkward around you which I think is nice because so many people feel awkward already yeah but like everyone's an instant friend to you which I really like and that's just like a couple things but I mean we could go on forever but it's your turn to ask a question no Rachel please go on (laughs) (laughs) I think for you, it's definitely being able to, like, lead a group, because, like, there's so many people that just don't know what to do or where to go a lot of the times, and for you, I feel like you figure things out very quickly, well, and, like, will get stuff done to a point where it's just, like, holy crap, I didn't realize that it would, it would be that easy kind of thing, like, yeah, just starting I mean, out on podcast, you're, yeah. like, <laughs> dude just starting out this podcast it was literally like all right we're sitting down I'm getting my camera and we're just going to do this thing and I was like hell yeah I love just doing things yeah it makes it easy you may it just makes it so much easier because a lot of people would just be like um yeah maybe we'll do that like in a in a year or two see where it takes us but you're just like no we're we're doing it now come on no I'm kind of always down for whatever so yeah, which is heckin' cool, my dude, to say the least. Thank you. All right. Uh, 
By the way, sorry, my like, I, I realized that my like laptop is very shaky. I'm balancing <laughs> it on my legs. No, <laughs> you have a desk right next to you. I know, but it makes it like a weird lighting situation. I'm trying to keep it so the windows shine oh, light okay. on my Yeah, face. I'm in my roommate's room. <laughs> I'm not even there in my room. There you go. Um, why do people do things they don't want to do if, quoted, life is too short? So you know how like there's always that saying where it's like, life's so short, uh, just do it. But a lot of people end up just doing a lot of things they just hate doing or just don't want to do. Um, I feel like the things you don't want to do are sometimes in categories. Like, things you don't want to do, but you need to do. Yeah. Like, to live. The things you don't want to do, but you need to do to live comfortably the things you don't want to do but you need to do for others Mm -hmm. and then in general just things you don't want to do but you do anyway and I feel like the only category you can really get rid of would be the last one the things you need to do but you do anyway Mm because I feel like you would get so much more out of life if you just tossed those out. And I guess if you didn't care about other people, then you could toss out the things you do for other people. But like, you need to eat, sleep, drink, have shelter, like the basic necessities. Like, and I don't always want to drink water, but like you have to drink water and you're supposed to whatever. And I can't use the excuse life is too short because it's going to be a lot shorter if I don't drink water. But like, and then like the thing you do to live comfortably, you have to take a shower. And I don't always want to take a shower because it takes time or whatever. Or like, you have to cut your nails because, I mean, some people say you don't, but like, I can't live comfortably with like long nails, whatever. So Mm -hmm. that would be my answer is that I think there are some things you can get rid of, but then other things you can't get rid of without sacrificing something else that's more important. Yeah, I do think that there are some things that are necessities, like taxes you kind of need to do. And it's like, nobody wants to do them, but it's like, you need to do them. Yeah. Else the government's going to come after you. But then that there's would be stuff under like, the category of to live comfortably, I think. Yeah, but then there's stuff like you have a job that you really don't like, but you're staying there anyways because it's the job that you got and it's like you just kind of stuck in that own path. Mm-hmm. But it's like you don't necessarily need to be there. You can find another job or just go haywire and move and go somewhere else. You could, yeah. Or and like think- uh, if you're in school for something that you really don't like because somebody pushed you into that part, like yeah like why are you there then why are you there if you're not passionate about something why be there but then there's also like the people that like really aren't passionate about anything like the people who just no matter where they are they're not happy with it like they can work anywhere but they'll always find a reason to quit yeah I feel like there there's like those certain people where it's like you're walking a tightrope where it's like yeah, it's sometimes it's the job, but sometimes it's just you in general that something in you needs to change, and that's all there is to it. Yeah, I get that point too. Mm-hmm. Um, this is pretty much just a basic how-to question. Okay. Um, and I think we should end it on this because we're running out of time, and it's a really fun question. All right. Um, how do the cops um handcuff a one-armed person? Wouldn't it just be like you put the handcuff on them and then you put the other handcuff on you so that they can't try and run away? You could, but what if you're putting them in the back of a squad car? Like, Then handcuff them to the rails because usually they have the like, or you could handcuff them to the actual seat itself. Yeah, I guess I mentioned right. you could always put I mean, it around. I was thinking legs. about it and I didn't come up with either of those, and those are both smarter than anything I came up with. I was like, well, if you like put one handcuff around their one arm and take the other one, and if they're like wearing 
jeans than yeah. like around one of their belt loops. Yeah, that's the other thing. You could just put it around their legs, like their ankles, because that would really stop them from moving too far. It's true. I don't know many one-armed people who have committed crimes. Obviously not in person, but also <laughs> not in general. I so I you had one arm, you might not want to commit crimes because that's like an easy way to know who it was that did the crime. Like, oh yeah, I know Larry. He's like over there. He he's the only person in town with one arm. Yeah, like you wouldn't be able to be like, oh, I don't know. He's like tall. He has glasses. Um, yeah, that would be the first thing people say. It's like, yeah, he had one arm. Yeah, that's a pretty identifying factor. Okay, mm -hmm. well, there's my answer. It's better than, I'm, yeah, I like your answer. <laughs> it's probably more realistic too. Yeah, you know. Okay, so All thank right. you so much for watching, friends. We'll see you probably in our regular setting um, next time. <laughs> um thank you so much for watching bye, bye.